Hello, I'm Reverend Dr. Donna Ganny, and I want to welcome you to the Kingdom Hour, where we are empowering and equipping individuals to succeed in everyday life with real life stories, providing kingdom insights for transforming your destiny and purpose. Our programming is designed to develop character, empower and equip leaders, transforming visions of entrepreneurs, developing a successful financial code and living a victorious life. Join me every week on Brick Brooklyn Free Speech TV. Subscribe also to our YouTube channel, KEI TV 12. Thanks for watching. Okay, so then um, we talked about partnering with other organizations out there like World Vision. Um, look at their projects, uh, Bill Gates Foundation. You look at the projects that they fund, and I have, if, I, if you have given your email, you receive a list of foundations, especially for the area that you're in that, that fund those projects, and they also give free computers and all of these things, yeah. So the list of foundations will, are, are on there. Some of them have links that you can just click and go to their website. Some of them you have to do your research and get them, but I know that they fund um, those particular projects. So you can use those, partner with, partner with them, partner with Scholastics partnering with uh, the Rockefeller Foundations, those type of organizations, they are very uh, more giving. They go by uh, emotional. Um, so like in your video, when you're developing a funding program, you want to develop something like uh, videos of what you are doing that uh, provoke the emotions and the passion of those that are wanting to give and donate toward it. They will do it, believe me. I, I've seen them, they come in and give in the millions for these type of things. And then one of the things that um, Microsoft uh, and Google, um, they give uh, free applications, they will give you free training materials to use online uh, to teach uh, the children specific for the ones that you are using. So if you're using those type of um, applications, uh, they also give you, they give you free tools. They give you free training as well that you can give to them. There's free grant writing programs that you should have in your uh, packet. If it's not in your packet, again, you will gain access to um, the place where you can get that information. Um, <clears throat> so when you are developing a fund, uh, funding um, fundraising program, also to do not discount the crowdfunding um, that was just passed out to you, the sheet. Crowdfunding is very important, but you again, you want to have your videos, you want to do your plan very well that if anyone calls you, you are ready, you have it documented. Here's my plan. This is the direction I'm taking, because they want to know that. If you say, if you don't have any direction, then they're going to be like, and if you don't have your organizational structure in place, if you don't have your uh, funding structure in place, if you don't have your uh, financial management uh, or accounting systems, in place, you will become questionable, okay? So you want to have a financial management structure in place in your plan. You want to have a clear budget. I said that before, but okay, so if I say I want 500,000, they say, what you gonna do with it? And they don't want you to tell me, I'm just gonna go dig wells in Africa and 
you don't have a plan on how you're going to implement it. You don't have any timelines. You don't have it phased out of when you expect to have it completed. Then they're going to, you become questionable because they're like, I'm not putting this money into their hand, and they really don't have a plan. They don't see where they're going. Who, who are you communicating with Africa to make this happen? Who do you plan on using to build this building? Who do you plan on, you know, and how are you gonna ship these things? What, what are you doing? They wanna see it all, and it takes work. It takes you sitting down and taking action and actually putting it together. A lot of people don't want to do that, but again, Habakkuk chapter two. Write the vision and make it plain that someone else can run with it, not just you, that you're looking at it, but someone else has to be able to feel your vision and know that it's functional, know that it's going to work. Because if I look at something and it look, look like, no, this is not gonna work, um, most chances is I'm going to just push it to the side and look at the ones that's working. Excuse me, but it's a matter, and, and I wonder if, if the Lord does that too. I pray that he don't. <laughs> I'm praying that he don't, but I don't think he does, uh, okay, because I think he want all of us to be successful. Amen? Amen. I think the Lord wants us to be successful, but I can see um, in time he's grooming and he's shaping the Israelites in the wilderness, you know, as they're going through. He's saying, no, go this way. And he says, okay, can't you see this? But he told Caleb, hey, Caleb is 85 years old. He already had told Caleb before he got to 85 years old, you're going to possess that mountain. That's your territory over there. That's going to be your land. So Caleb gets 85 years old and he, God visits him again and he says, here's your land over here, right? Here's your mountain. And so hey, Caleb is 85 years old and the Bible says he has the strength. He has the strength still at 85 years old to go and pursue it. Mm -hmm. So how much more will it be for anyone? Like, uh, uh, Dr. Sonny was saying, he said, it shouldn't be that you get 50 something years old and you say it's finished. No, we have to keep going. We have to, we have to continue the pace. Abraham did it, you know? And so when they were going through the wilderness, God is processing their mind. He's saying, look, you're not going the right way. Shift this way, move this way, you know? eat this way, talk this way, walk this way. So he's processing them. And a lot of people talk about, well, I, I don't believe in the uh, processing something, but I believe the Lord processes us because when he got to Gideon, he told him, he said, I want you to get your father's youngest bull and I want you to use that one as a sacrifice. And when you Go off into your, your mother's refrigerator, you know how it is. If you just go to take something and, and, and mama had it prepped, had that cake ready for dinner to put on the tape and you, the table for you to eat it and you've already went in and cut off of it, what is mama gonna say? <laughs> so he don't know what his father had planned for that bull. And when you look at the youngest bull, if you're a farmer, and you, somebody's coming to take your youngest bull and, and sacrifice it. That's a problem because the youngest bull is getting ready to birth out another bull. It's getting ready to produce some more bulls. It's getting ready to produce some more milking cows. So God is telling him, you, you know, we're getting ready to break up this process that's in, in your mind, in your forefather's mind, in your forefather's and your forefather's mind. Because what you're doing is you sit in here and you have a fear of this Midianite and you have forgotten that I am the most high God. I am the ruler of the land. I'm the one that's in control. So I got to deal with your mind first, Gideon, because your mind is lost. You, you over here pressing wheat on a wine press. So I really have to deal with your mind. Okay, so sometimes God has to deal with our mind to get us to move, to drive us in the direction we need to go in. Amen. So he's over here, he's pressing 
wheat on a wine press. Can you imagine what that's like, Bishop? You press some wheat on a wine press. Hmm. And the wine press is meant to press what? Wine. But he's pressing it on the wine press because the Bible says he's afraid of the Midianites. He's afraid they're going to see him. And they, the Midianites didn't have no more weapons than they did because they were the ones doing the blacksmith. So they could make any kind of weapon they needed to make because of the fear of their forefathers and their forefathers' forefathers that was embedded in the mind and made it difficult for them to shift and move in that hour. So God said, go and take the young bull. and Go and take that young bull because that's a passionate part of your father's house. And that young bull, the problem with that young bull, Bishop, hmm. like I said, it's multiplying. It can produce some more bulls. It can bring a whole lot of more uh, cattle in the land. It could, it could do a lot of things. So I want you to take that passionate thing. And you see your, fa your father right here he, in this house that he's in. You know what he's doing? He's worshiping Baal. The God of the Midianites on it. So I want you to take that altar. I want you to take that altar that he has erected to bow. And I want you to cut that wood up. I want everybody to see it. Because it's right here by your father's house. On the right hand side the Lord said. Look at that. So not only that. I want you to take that image over there that he has erected. Hmm. And I want you to tear that image up. I want you to cut it up. And that's what you're going to put on my altar. So there are some images that you have to deal with in your funding. Some images of your, your past or in some images that you've been taught. This is how you do it, but they don't. They give you a superficial view of how it's supposed to be done. They don't give you the full picture of it. They just gave you an image. And sometimes you got to cut that image up and erect it into the way that God wants it to be positioned and place it up on his altar to define it. Amen. Because that's the only way you're going to get it there. And that's that's this this, you know, forefather thinking has to has to be broken up. It has to be twisted off. It has to be shaken out of the thoughts. It has to be. Cast down as an imagination. Yes. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you got to look at it from a different angle because you've been grinding it. You've been molding it on the wrong press. On the wrong one. Okay? So we have to shift it sometimes. And we have to put it in its proper perspective. And there's a whole lot of things out there it gives you just a little bit of information, but it doesn't give you the pattern. It doesn't give you the design. It doesn't give you the dimension that you need to bring it to the proper order. And so if I'm seeing a 5,000 grant and I know I can do this with it, but, it, you know, so my mind is let me just focus on this $5,000 uh, grant, but... The Lord is saying, I want you to go and get that $1 million yes, grant that can shift the environment. And I want you to shake that environment up with it. And let them know, thus says the Lord in the land. Amen. 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 So you got to shift it. You got to shift your way of thinking. In your funding strategies, you got to shift your way of thinking in your marketing strategies. A lot of people will say, oh, she's she's going that way. And, and some of them will try to trail behind. You can see them trying to trail behind your vision, trying to mark and do what you're doing. But God has given you a plain sight, a plain direction, a plain way of doing it that nobody can understand. And so... They'll trail you for a minute, and then they look up and they say, I can't get this. I can't, I can't keep up. Because God has a way of dimensionalizing things to where man can comprehend it. Because he's in more than 3D mode. He's in a 12D mode. Amen? Amen. Amen. 
So we can't put them in a box and we can't shape them. We can't put them the way that we want it to be. So if I put my funding off in a box and I put my strategies in the way that I want to see it to function, it won't get there. So you need to get it to a point where you have people knocking on your door. I see a shift in the atmosphere. I see a change in the environment. So let me go sow in this corner right here. And there's people that God have out there to do it. And you be thinking, okay, it has to be another Christian. But not all the time will it be that way. I'm not trying to exalt the Jews, but I'm saying that they will sow in fertile ground. Okay, so I want to say this also, too, is that one thing that um, we miss when we look at the Jews, one thing that they follow is the order of the original principles that the Lord have set in place. So one of the things that they do is they position themselves very near. You go into New York, if you go downtown where all of their jewelry stores are, there's a temple nearby. They position themselves near the order of God. We, we often fail to do that. That, that. that support of Habakkuk too, also Habakkuk chapter one. There's an order that God mandated, and they keep it. So when it's time for them to worship, they close their place down, they go. You will not see one open on a Saturday because they close it down. They go, when it's a Jewish shop, they close their business down, they at their worship. They follow the kingdom principle. So you see them growing, you see them fluctuating, and moving, and prospering, and, and you have to, you, you, you know, when you, when you are designing something, when you're looking for funding, when you're thinking about growing something and prospering it, look at what's prospering, look at what's growing, look at what's functioning, okay? So if I'm going to go and look for crowdfunding, and and I just say, okay, this is what I'm doing, but I, the person can't capture your vision. You lost them in the beginning. You got to catch them in the beginning. You got to make them feel it in the beginning. You see, you got to get that emotion in the beginning. When you are relaying your program out or your project out to the people and you can't have a one big picture because if you make one big picture and I can see all the little intricate details of what's going on in there I'll, you will lose them so if I say that I'm going to have a project of reaching all of the children in this area for sensory training or some type of mental rehabilitative training, then I need to look at, okay, what are all of these potential impacts? Is it behavioral? Is it mental? Is it physical? Is it spiritual? What, what am I doing? And if it's mental, what part of mental? What, what aspects of mental are you with? Me? Because we all know that there's more than one level of mental grain going on there, okay? So I need to spell it out. I need to make it plain. If it's five bullet points, if it's eight bullet points, seven bullet points, whatever it is, it needs to be very plain. If I'm um, going to uh, build a school that is going to uh, impact uh, 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 black children to be leaders in society, I need to have a vision for it. I need to make it plain. How, what kind of leadership training? I need to know the who's and what's and when's and why's and how's of it, okay? 
All right, I hope uh, that I help, but I'm going to open it up for some questions and then we'll do a little uh, exercise to help you. Uh, does anyone have any questions? I have a question, but I didn't have